Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My dear student, I hope that you will be all right. So, the today lecture topic is the forecasting. So, why we studying uh, forecasting in production management? Because in production management, we have already studied different topics related how uh, related to optimization, related to procurement, related to supply chain management, related to transportation, related to cost benefit analysis. So, mean now we will. Uh, study this forecasting in order to predict about the future. For example, how many uh, product we need to produce in order to fulfill the demand, how many unit we need to uh, to store in our uh, in the warehouse, how many unit we need to to supply for the end customer. So, I mean in all these scenarios, we will be using forecasting. So, before going to start this chapter. Uh, I'm just uh, going to, to talk about a little bit the forecasting horizon mean in the forecasting we need we, we need to deal with different time horizon sometime we need to do a short term forecast sometime we need to do a medium uh, range forecast sometime we need to do a long range forecast so I will discuss these things in great detail to me forecasting in this chapter is strictly related to the data forecasting because we will be using data we will be using past data and then we will uh, use some specific tools in order to to, to, to use that uh, post data to predict about the future. So, I mean if I start from myself, so I mean on the daily basis I am doing some sort of forecasting. Maybe you will also be doing some sort of forecasting. For example, you uh, in this semester if, if a student start predicting about the future that what will be his or her GPA uh, in this semester then you can easily do it because how much time you working how much time you spend while preparing a specific subject so I mean after that you will be able you will be using to use your uh, past experience you will be able to predict about your GPA you will be able about to about your grade that what will be the grade in a specific course so I mean it will not be a just a blind deal because you are using some past data so while using this that past data, you will be able to predict about the future. So uh, proceeding to the contents of the chapter, I am just going to start from the definition of forecasting. What is forecasting? If someone asks you what is forecasting in an interview, so I mean uh, a general answer will be process of predicting a future event. What kind of future event? It will be raining outside. So how you will forecast it? So nowadays, mean in the news, they mean predicting that it will be raining tomorrow. So, mean because there are satellites in the orbit, they collect the data and on the basis of their data, they also collect the wind speed. So, mean on the basis of their data, they predict about that it will be raining tomorrow. So, mean what is forecasting? Forecasting is basically a process of predicting a future event. So, you can see from the screen that there are two, one is uh, a man and one is a woman. That mean I see that you will get an A this semester. So, I mean it is not a blind deal mean how you will get an A because if you share some information then after that she will tell you that you will get an A grade. If you share some information with me that how many marks you got in your midterm, how uh, much marks you got in your quizzes, in your project then after that I will be able to predict, I will be able to use that past data and I will be able to predict that this will be your grade in the coming. Uh, result. So, I mean uh, uh, forecasting is a process of predicting a future event, a statement about the future. So, I mean it basically we using the previous data. So, on the basis of that previous data we will be able to uh, to give a statement about the future. Now, the second statement is forecast more accurate for group versus individual. So, this is very very important. For example, if you want to do uh, a forecast for a specific subject in a semester then it will be difficult but if you using uh, all the subject which you mean taking in this semester so maybe that forecast will be more accurate it will be an overall CGPA forecast but if you taking only one subject as an individual maybe that forecast uh, will not be okay. So for example if you forecasting for a specific country for a specific for example COVID-19 so I mean you can use the past month data that how many cases will be registered in the coming month. So, on the basis of that you will be able to forecast and that forecast that, that the accuracy will be very high. But if you get a specific uh, 
locality if you get a specific province data if you get a specific district data and you use that for forecasting that for predicting for the whole country so maybe that that forecast accuracy will not be that that much high so forecast accuracy decrease as time horizon increase so this is the third step why it will be decreased because for example if i give you an example of technology for example if you using the previous technology before people use for watching video vcr okay so i mean if you using the pro the the vcr data that how many unit of vcr we need to produce how many cassette player before the cd the uh, in most of our cars we using the different cassette players so i mean how many cassettes we need to produce how many cds we need to produce so i mean that will be totally in a wrong forecast because because technology is going updated day by day so we will not be able to use the 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 very old data so i mean forecast accuracy will be decrease as time horizon increase so i mean for example if you want to to predict for the uh, the air conditional forecast so i mean you need to use the most recent data the previous month data the previous year data but if you using let's suppose 20 year data then in that case the forecast will not be so accurate so forecast accuracy decrease as time horizon increase So I already mentioned that mean we use forecast everywhere, even an ordinary person, even a vendor in a market, even a shopkeeper in a market, he she use forecast that how many unit they need to buy, and uh, how many unit they uh, will sell to. In from the uh, table you can see accounting cost profit estimate they using cost benefit analysis. So I mean cost benefit analysis they using averages in order to estimate. in order to predict the what will be the cost what will be the profit in finance people what will be the cash flow what will be the cash inflow what will be the funding at the end what will be the revenue we will generate from a specific business even in human resource mean how many people we need to hire how many people how many instructor how many professor how many uh, researcher we need to hire how many uh, people we need to fire so mean in human resource management they using in marketing okay what will be the price how we need to promote a specific product what will be the strategy management information system we can use artificial ne neural network machine learning information technology is system services so i mean everywhere we can use forecast in operation management in scheduling in workloads assignment in product services design and what will be the service what will be the service design will be the product design so i mean everywhere in all the managerial subjects we we, we can use forecast directly or indirectly so going to proceeding to the forecasting time horizon as i already discussed in the start of this lecture that we have different ranges different time horizon for forecasting so i mean you need to use some specific technique for some specific time horizon for example for long run uh, range forecast you will not be able to use short range forecast technique similarly for short range forecast you will not be able to use long range forecast technique so i mean you need to understand how sh what is short range forecast so i mean normally short range forecast is up to one year generally less than 3 month so example are job scheduling workforce level job assignment production levels mean these are just temporary so i mean you 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 make a schedule as a temporary not for a long time medium range forecast which is mean the duration is more than 3 months up to 3 years sales and production planning budgeting okay just like mean every year government of pakistan or different country government they announce the budget okay which is only for one year long range forecast which is long range forecast for example monetary policy fiscal policy uh, related to the dam construction which is the duration of that is more than 3 year new product planning facility location because you will locate a facility you will spend a lot of money so you will not be able to to change that facility location after 2 or 3 years so that will be considered as a long range forecast research and development so these are the time horizon and we will use some specific techniques tools for these uh, in order to 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 predict for the future so being a business analyst you need to understand the basic elements of a good forecast so the most important thing is timely 
you need to forecast in a specific time you not need to spend too much time because if you not meet if you not meet the demand of a specific for example if you are producing something and if you not meet the demand then some external will capture the demand they will capture the market from you and at the end nobody will buy your product so means your losses will be automatically start your cost will be high and your profit will be going down so mean it should be reliable mean for example if you producing 100 unit the forecast show you that for the next one you need to produce 120 unit so it should be reliable it should be near to 100 because your capacity is 150 so it should not be 150 or 1 or 200 so it should be reliable it should be accurate mean we know that 100 percent god no 100 percent god have the 100 percent knowledge of everything so mean we can only use a intuition a logical intuition that mean it will be not 100 percent but at least it should be 90 to 99 percent accurate it should be meaningful for example if you want to to discuss this with your boss your manager it should be meaningful it should not be just uh, 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 flying in the air it it should be mean meaningful it should be justific uh, the, the justification should be clear the outcome should need to be clear the objective should be clear and it should be in the written form for example if you using some specific technique it should be in the written form that mean this is the variable which affecting the other variable and these are the causes okay and it should be easy to use most of the people need to know how it will work okay so i mean it's not it should not be a complex it should not mean uh, taking the forecast to a complex area it should be easy to use so these are the element you need to understand while forecasting while predicting for the future these are some steps in the forecasting process so step 1 why should you need to do forecast so these are the step you need to understand step 1 is determine purpose of forecast why you using why you need to forecast what are the objective behind this forecast so you need to understand you need to clarify you need to uh, interpret why you need to do forecast okay then we already studied in the step 2 what kind of forecast you want to do you want to do forecast for a long term you want to do forecast for a short term you want to do for a medium term then based on your expertise you will be able to choose this time horizon step 3 select a forecasting technique so inshallah we will study these forecasting techniques which there are some techniques which is for which is are more related which is are which are more suitable for short term forecast some techniques are very accurate for the medium range forecast and some techniques are very accurate for the long term forecast so on the basis of those when you understand you will be able to select a specific forecasting technique step 4 gather and analyze data so i mean you need to <clears throat> get some information so on the basis of that information you will be able to predict about the future mean for example if you want that how many uh, unit of air condition we need to produce for the coming summer season so i mean you have already some information of your unit which you have already sold last year or in the last time period so using those that data you will be able to predict about the future prepare the forecast then while running that technique you need to construct graphs you need to construct some specific parameter and then you need to forecast you need to predict that this amount we need to produce and then you need to keep an eye you need to monitor the forecast maybe some uh, nice factor occur maybe some uncertain situation occur just like in the covid 19 maybe such like scenario occur then what you will do how you will fulfill the demand how you will meet the demand of the people so you also need to monitor the forecast you also need to feed the specific information which you received in the existing forecasting technique so it will give you some accurate information so these are the steps in forecasting process i already mentioned in the previous slide identify the purpose so i already explain this what are the objectives why you want to conduct this collect historical data so data play a very very important role in forecasting play just like a backbone in the prediction so you need to collect data historical data i will discuss how you will collect data different you will use different questionnaires sometimes you will use primary data sometimes you will use secondary data sometimes you will conduct interviews so then 
while collecting that data, that data will not be a formal data. That will not be a clean data. So you need to make it clean. You need to remove the nice factor from that data. Then you need to plot the data. You need to check the fluctuation in the data. The, uh, maybe there will be some random things appearing. It will be randomly appearing. So how you will clean the data? I will discuss that while solving some specific example in the later stages. Then the four one select a forecast model that seem appropriate for the data. So once again, you need to have a look. You want to conduct a short run forecast, long run forecast or medium. Then you will use a remedy. You will use the tool. Which tool will be the most appropriate, will be the most feasible one. Then you need to develop compute forecast for fear historical data. Check forecast accuracy is one or more. So mean, uh, we will also discuss different measures. For example, forecasting error, for example, tracking signals, comparing with other techniques, then we will check the error, forecasting error. Forecasting error means the actual minus forecast or forecast minus actual. So if it is too much, if this difference is too much, it means the accuracy is not so good. If it is very short, the value is very low, then it means the forecast is good. It's near the reality. Seven, is the accuracy of forecast acceptable? So I mean you can use your own logical intuition, your own experience, and on the basis of that, you will judge it. If no, then you select new forecasting model. You need to choose another technique, and then you need to change your parameter. You need to change the model, and then you repeat the step again. If yes, forecast over planning horizon, adjust forecast based on additional qualitative information insight, monitor results, and measure for forecast accuracy. So these are the 10 steps you need to understand while forecasting, while predicting about the future. Types of forecast, so I mean there are several types of forecast, some are economic forecast, mean in our planning commission, different economists, they are using these techniques, these types of forecast to address business cycle, what will be the inflation rate, for example, State Bank, State Bank of Pakistan every year announce that this will be the interest rate in this year, inflation, this will be the inflation rate money supply, how many currency they need to produce, how many currency they need to print, okay. Some are technological forecasts, predicted of technology, technological progress, okay, a specific technology will be finished, when it will be finished, so I mean these are the technological forecasts, impact development of new product, when a specific product will stop, or, or stop working, we already discussed this in the life cycle assessment, what will be the maturity, what will be the decline of a specific product. So when the decline start, automatically a new product will be coming to the market and the previous product will be totally obsolete. Okay. Demand forecast. So normally we use, we will be working on the demand forecast, predict sales of existing product, how many unit we need to produce while using the previous data, how many car, for example, car manufacturer, Toyota, Honda, they using basically the forecast, they using the previous sale data. So on the basis of that, they predict about the future. Determine the type of model to be used. So these are very, very important thing. You need to understand who will be using the forecast. Academician will be used. Technical person will be used. Who will be using the forecast? And what information do they require? So what kind of information they require? So I mean, for example, if we using the uh, COVID-19 the, the data, that how many people will die in the coming month? So I mean, we can use the previous data on the basis of that, but that will be just a judgment. That will be just, maybe it will not be 100% accurate. But basically, if we use the previous data, then maybe we will be able that this will be the forecast because the death rate is going up. So maybe we will read, reach to the top, to the peak of the curve. So when it will be, the curve will be flatter, when it will be going down. So we can use such like techniques in order to predict about the future. How relevant is historical data and what is its availability? So I mean, because when you collect the data, the data will not be accurate. Maybe there will be some error in the data. So how you will understand? Is the data is reliable? So I mean, we can also check reliability. We will also discuss, we will also study some reliability technique to check is the data reliable? If it is not reliable, how to make it reliable? And what is its availability? Is it available or not? How accurate does the forecast have to be? What is the time period of the forecast? So I mean all these questions you can answer while using your experience, while using the data which you have collected so far. 
how much time do we have to develop the forecast so once again the time is very very important you not need to spend time you not need to spend too much time so how much time do we have to develop the forecast what is the cost or benefit so the cost or benefit mean you not need to spend too much money because when the cost going up automatically your profit will be going down and every organization main objective is to maximize the profit and minimize the cost so what is the cost or benefit value of this forecast to our company determine the forecast horizon so i have already discussed this that there is an inverse relationship between forecast accuracy and time horizon when the time increase the time the forecast accuracy will be decrease okay the longer the time horizon the more inaccurate the forecast will be time horizon should be at least as long as time period of strategic plan so for example i already give you example for example the cd how many cds we need to produce so nowadays people not producing not using cds vcr people not using vcr for video uh, watching videos because some more advanced ssd drive uh now using people different cameras different video cameras different mean mode in order to watch different videos in order to capture videos so for example if we still want to do to predict that how many unit of vcr we should need to produce so that will be totally wrong so mean we also need to have a look on the life cycle analysis live product life cycle what is the product life cycle so time horizon should be at least as long as time period of strategic plan product life cycle influence length of forecast technology product said would have to short forecast because on a daily basis technological product are going up for example nokia uh, double c10 mean in the start but now people will not buy that they nokia will not producing that mobile phone okay you can uh, you can also consider different example that mean as the technology is going up technology is updating then the previous technology is going to obsolete and people not using that but people using some advanced gadgets some advanced uh, product but on the other side milk sale would have a long forecast because we using milk we using milk in tea we using milk on uh, in our daily diet so mean the sale would have a long forecast so you can use a longer time period data to predict the price of 1 liter of milk but for technological product you will not be able to use a long period forecast okay so I mean there are different models forecasting model which we will discuss in this uh, lecture there are some judgmental model so I mean you can understand from the word judgmental you can judge it who will judge it the expert people who working on that so they are why that is called a uh, judgmental model which use qualitative method because sometime we will not be able to collect data quantitative data will not be available we will use some subjective input so in such like scenario we can conduct expert opinion we can conduct interviews and on the basis of that on the basis of that knowledge we can predict about the future time series models which is very very important because in this chapter we will be working on time series model we will uh, use some specific time period data we will utilize that data we will interpret that data we will feed that data in some different forecasting model and on the basis of that we will predict we will forecast for the future so mean time series model which basically use quantitative method use historical data assuming the future will be like the past the future will be like the past casual uh, causal model or associative model so mean we have already studied causal mean what what is the impact of a specific variable on the other for example if i give you an example what will be the sale effect on uh, temperature if temperature is going up the sale of ice cream will be automatically going up okay if this rainy season going longer then the sale of umbrella will also be going up so basically causal model or associative model use explanatory variable to predict the future which use cause and effect method forecasting approaches so we will use some qualitative method as i already mentioned the judgmental model so when we will be able to use qualitative method when we will we will not be able to get the quantitative data for example if you want to produce a new product even customer not know about that product 
customer never ever use that product so if you conduct surveys if you conduct interviews from the customer customer know nothing about that so in such like scenario what you will do so in such like scenario we will use some qualitative method judgmental methods del p method etc etc which i will discuss in the next slide so mean qualitative method will be used when situation is vague and little data exist new products new technology people know nothing about but expert know a little bit so mean you will take uh, opinion of expert and on the basis of that expert opinion you will decide and you will use your intuition your experiences because you spend time you work on that technology you work on that product you know the know how about that technology so you will use your intuition and on the basis of that intuition experience you will be able to predict the another one is quantitative method so quantitative method used when situation is stable and historical data exists so i already mentioned different example the car sell example mean how many car we need to produce so you have some data of the previous year okay how many unit of air condition we need to produce for the coming summer some, uh, season so you have the previous data because things are exist product are exist people using those products and they using the current technology maybe there is some little bit change in the technology but the main objective of the product is the same so we will use some mathematical techniques the best and the easiest one is the average and normally we also use average we work we believe on the average mean forecasting sales of color television forecasting sales of air condition forecasting sales of uh, mobile phone etc etc so in the qualitative method the first one is the judgmental model so judgmental as it is clear from the name judgmental we will judge we will judge from the opinion we will judge from the scenario basically these are the qualitative and essentially use estimate based on expert opinion sometime we will conduct survey of sale forces because they have expertise the, the they have expertise of delivering different product they know they have a strong relationship with the customer most appropriate for manufacturing and world sales form sometime survey of customer applicable to all form customer express for preferences of new or modified product sometime customer have some problem while using some specific product so they expecting that if they manufacture such like item if all these error flaws remove from the current existing products so sometime they also collect information from the customer historical analogy most appropriate performs that have several outlet introduction of new product which has characteristics similar to previous product sometime we get information from a previous similar product and we just do use some reverse engineering we update that we update the modification we update the objective of that product so in this way we can use our intuition we can use our expertise in order to predict market research which includes surveys test and observation we observe market we also observe the competitor product we conduct test we conduct different surveys and results are statistically extrapolated to develop forecast of demand for product del p method we can also use in the qualitative method as a del p method which basically uses a panel of expert to obtain a consensus of opinion so i mean uh, they collect in, uh, opinion from different expert in the area let's suppose in the biomedical area if they want to do if they want to use some uh, specific medicine or if some technological form so i mean they will collect expert opinion related to their product related to their service and on based on that opinion they will use data they primarily for unique new product or processes for which no previous data exists so i mean judgmental and del p method market research historical analogy survey of customer these are basically used when there is no previous data exist so in such like scenario we will use these things but we will use time series model because we want to play with the data we want to use the data the previous data so basically time series forecasting model normally use historical records that are readily available within the firm or industry to predict future sales for this reason they are often referred to as a internal or intrinsic model assumption in time series forecasting is that past sales are fairly accurate predictor of future sales so once again for example i already given different example related to the air condition sale so we have some previous data 
the automobile sector sale that how many car we need uh, toyota need to produce how many car honda need to produce so they have some data they have some previous data so using that data basically that is a time series data now the time series what kind of time horizon you using so all these will be depending on your intuition your expertise your understanding related to the mathematical models so normally we will use mathematical models for the time series forecasting so uh, i hope that you understand in the later stages in the next lecture i will discuss some uh, specific example how we will use different techniques how we will check the data behavior what kind of data is it is it mean uh, irregular fluctuation in the data is it a seasonal data is it a cyclical data so we will discuss that in the next lecture thank you so much